The Beam Saber arc is not an arc I hear talked about often, yet in my opinion it's a stellar example of what makes a Gintama arc so great. It's a short arc, only 3 episodes long, but still delivers a message and a lesson that speaks to the heart, and so this arc is what we shall discuss today. If you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing and ringing that bell, as I cannot explain to you how much a just small action can do for this channel. And if you want to go the extra mile to support this channel even further, then consider pledging to my Patreon. Anyway, on with the video. To recap the arc for us all, the Beam Saber arc starts with Obi Hajime, the fought dead older brother of Shinpachi and Tei, returning to Edo as a master in the ways of Beam Saber combat. He says he wants to help them restore the dojo, but soon his secret is revealed. He is a cyborg and one that will soon lead to the destruction of the Earth. Gintoki learning the truth goes to fight Hajime himself in an attempt to save him and spare Shinpachi the pain of losing his older brother. Yet, in the end, Shinpachi is the one to take up the sword and finish off Hajime, saving the Earth but ending his brother's life. The arc then ends with the siblings using the life insurance money of Hajime's death to pay for lots of macadamia nuts, with which they bribe homeless men to train at the dojo. It's a short arc, but even so it holds a lot of heart and explores one of the greatest themes of the series, the past. Hajime was Tei's first love and Shinpachi's big brother, someone who meant the world to them both, but was taken from them too soon. These two siblings have suffered their fair share of loss, be it their father or Hajime, and as such have both been moulded by it. Tei became strong and independent far earlier than she should have in order to protect Shinpachi, in order to serve as his guardian after having lost the two men he looked up to most. This is why when Hajime returns in this arc we see a different side of Tei, one we see very rarely in the series. We see her let her guard down and be vulnerable, she stops acting like Shinpachi's guardian and instead acts like the young girl she is. Yet even if Hajime returned to them, it wouldn't be for long. It's as Gintoki says, he's just a dead corpse with some junk stuck on. It's a cruel way of putting it, but it's not wrong. Hajime had already died, he may have come back to say goodbye, but he will go away again and this time he will never come back. Loss is something that defines the very core of Gintama, the overall lesson of the series after all is on loss and how to deal with it. And of all characters it is Hajime himself who gives in my opinion one of the greatest pieces of dialogue about loss and more importantly how to deal with it. <laughs> Loss is a hard thing, but the important part to remember is that it is in the past. You cannot change it no matter how much you cry or regret. Instead, you need to look towards the future, learn from that loss, and laugh. This lesson Hajime teaches happens to be the very one that Kentoki himself comes to learn after the loss of Shoyo, which isn't surprising considering how much Hajime is compared to Kentoki as the two big brothers of Shinpachi. The main character to learn the lesson in this arc then is of course Shinpachi. He must learn the proper way to handle loss, something which mirrors Gintoki's own development. And well, if it wasn't blatantly obvious, this arc frames Shinpachi and Gintoki in a very specific light of master and student. Gintoki had to kill his own master to protect his friends. He had to kill the one most precious to him to save those most precious to him. It's a decision that breaks him and leads him down a spiral of depression, one he is only dragged out of when he forms new connections. And now Shinpachi has to do the same. Like how Gintoki killed Shoyo, he had to kill Hajime. He had to let the one he cares for most leave him forever to keep those he cares for most by his side. However, it is not that these two scenes are so similar that is of note, it is in how they differ. As although yes Shinpachi was sad, devastated after raising his sword against his big bro, he didn't give in to despair. He may have cried, but he also laughed. He was strong enough to shoulder the pain and stand tall as that is what a samurai does. Shinpachi in this moment was far stronger than Gintoki as he didn't give in to despair. But that isn't to slight Gintoki, instead it serves to demonstrate the biggest difference between them. Back then Gintoki was alone, but Shinpachi is not. He didn't have to burden all the pain alone as he had been taught how to handle it, whereas Gintoki ended up alone and couldn't work out what Shoyo had been trying to teach him. Which funny enough is something else demonstrated in this arc, Gintoki tried to save Hajime alone to spare Shinpachi and Tei from pain, but by fighting alone he only ended up hurt, he still didn't understand the true worth of connection and slipped back into his old ways of thinking, to do things alone. As the most common misunderstanding I see from Gintama fans is that Gintoki's arc was already finished by the start of the series, 
as in truth his arc doesn't end till the very last scene of the series. Now Gintoki's arc is not one that can be neatly summed up in one sentence, but at least one part of it is becoming as great a man as Shoyo was, about becoming to Shinpachi and Kagura what Shoyo was to him. Shoyo was a man who taught important lessons, who imparted knowledge that others would not suffer like he did, and Gintoki in this arc does the same. He taught Shinpachi, he showed him firsthand how a samurai should be, and as such this arc ends not on a somber note, but a happy one. Shinpachi uses Hajime's life insurance money to buy nuts, nuts which bribe homeless men to join the dojo. Sure is a comedic scene, but it gives across a very important point. Sure he lost someone dear to him, but he wouldn't take away just tears from that experience. No, he will learn from it and push on into the future to honour Hajime through his actions, as even if you lose someone, you can let them live on through your actions. Death and loss are sad, and that is undeniable. But you must remember that there is more to loss than just tears. The past is just that, the past. It cannot be changed. What's lost can never truly be regained. But the future is just that, the future. It will only be what you make it. Loss is something we can all relate to. It's one of those things I think is universal to all people, regardless of race, sex, culture or age. We all cry and we all smile. It's what makes us human. And this arc to me demonstrates so beautifully both the tragedy and the beauty of loss. The thing that we can all relate to. And so I just want to end off this discussion with my favourite piece of dialogue from this arc. The words of Obi-Wan, Galaxy Swordmaster, Kanofi. Thanks for watching everyone, this is the first, well, kind of second if you count the Ikamatsu video of a new type of video I'm trying on the channel because honestly I'm running out of Gintama characters to make an artist's videos on and for those I have yet to touch like Kagura or Hichikata I'm just really struggling to put together a script that I'm happy with. So to make sure the channel doesn't go completely dry of Gintama content, I'm going to try to do some of these smaller arc analysis. So any feedback on how I structured them, and well, if you like them in general, would be really appreciated. Comment of the week comes from Almong Wengarden. I hope I'm saying that right. And yeah, that speech to me, again, is one of the greatest moments in the darker box. It really is quite stellar. If you're interested in my literary endeavours, then why not check out my books Gang Fluid Justice and People of Fate Volume 1, available at Amazon.com. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting this channel, then consider pledging to my Patreon, where for as little as £2.75 a month, you can get your name at the end of the video, like Hikari Desu, 7SO, Smokey McBobby, Rinjak9696, and Dewey. So with all that said and done, I've been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek, and I'm signing out. Stay safe, everyone.